So hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the Steve Fonz Girls Rising series. We are very excited to be hosting our first webinar today called Weaving Wellness, Connecting Mental Health Resources, Community, and Self to Address the Mental Health Struggles of Native and Indigenous Girls and Young Women. Um, my name is Deb Hodge, and I'm a senior advisor with the Steve Fund. Um, I'm just going to take us through a couple of things to get us started today. Um, I just wanted everyone to know we will be recording this session, and we will make it available on our website after the live webinar today. Um, and while participants are muted, feel free to use the Q&A function and the chat box to ask any questions you have, make comments, and really engage with our presentation. Um, if we can go to the next slide, I'll give you a little introduction to the Steve Fund. Um, the Steve Fund is the nation's leading organization focused on supporting the mental health and emotional well-being of young people of color. We work with colleges and universities, nonprofits, researchers, mental health experts, families, and young people to promote programs and strategies that build understanding and assistance. With our multicultural mental health experts, we deliver virtual, on-campus, and on-site programming and services, such as our workshop today. So if you are interested in learning more about the Steve Fund or our programs and services, please feel free to send me a message through the chat feature, um, or you can also visit our website. Without further ado, I am honored to welcome our phenomenal and dynamic speaker, Haley Chevelle. Haley is a Native and Indigenous content consultant for the Steve Fund. She is also an Indian Child Welfare Act advocate, working to support Native families going through child dependency cases. Haley is a re-enrolled member of the Dry Creek Rancheria Band of Como Indians. She received her master's in education with a concentration in social justice from San Francisco State, and she is also an alum of UC Davis, where she received a bachelor's degree in psychology and Native American studies. Haley values love, justice, and building community, and we are so lucky to have her leading our workshop today. So with that, I will hand it over to you, Haley. Thank you so much, Deb, and thank you everybody for joining me this morning. Uh, it's morning still for me. Um, before we begin, I would like to do a land acknowledgement and let you all know where we are. In the chat box, um, we will have posted a, a link. This link will let, let you see whose native land you're on if you click on it. I am currently in Pomo, Miwok, and Wapo territory in Northern California, about an hour uh, north of San Francisco. If you know where you are located, if you could please put that in the chat and I can welcome you before we begin, that would be great. Our folks, Hong Ben Nais. Welcome. Thank you. Lindsay Lenape here. Thank you. Welcome. Duluth land of Ashinaabe, Lakota, Dakota. Welcome, thank you. Pretty cool, thank you. Oh, wonderful, Len Lenape. 
And as these keep rolling in, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to our agenda. So please feel free to continue sharing if you have them. Thank you, Padawatami. Um, our agenda today, we are gonna do our introduction, objectives and community agreements. Then we'll go into what's weighing on us. From there, we'll get into what's kind of getting in our way. And lastly, we'll, we'll touch on weaving networks of care and community. Our objectives for today are to understand the stresses and traumas weighing heavy on Native and Indigenous girls and women's mental health, to identify barriers to accessing mental health services, and to end it, we'll weave networks of care for our whole well being. Some community agreements. I'd like you to be present. At this time, if you do have a pen or paper, can you um, put it next to you? Part of what this uh, webinar will be asking is to engage in journaling and self-reflection. So please engage as best you can. Please be open to reflection. And please understand that you are your expert of yourself, right? We don't, I, I can't know your story more than you. Um, so during this webinar, if you're able to use what you know about yourself and reflect on that to share and to uh, help build these communities of care, that would be great. What's weighed on us? So one of the things that we wanted to look at is how are historical traumas, things that have happened to our communities weighing on us? So we're gonna go big picture to small. All, all native people have or have had a fundamental relationship to the lands we've lived on and strong community relationships within those lands which is, I think, why it's so important for us to acknowledge still today the lands that we are inhabiting. All Native people are here in spite of deliberate efforts to remove us from, to, from, to remove us from those lands, to kill us, or to assimilate us into the larger society. The first being reservations. In this picture, you can see, or this GIF, you can see kind of the way that lands and our landscape in relation to lands has changed throughout the years, right? Being on, put on reservations, being isolated in that way, being deliberately kept there from others and from the larger society. And then it changed to relocation, right? We're going to remove people from the lands and we're going to remove them from their traditional lands and put them into cities to try to assimilate us into the larger society. Part of that was working with residential schools, um, taking children, re re removing them from the homes, disallowing them from participating in ceremonies, speaking their language, their culture, with the deliberate agenda of, um, with the deliberate agenda of ending the Indian identity. And all of this in culmination, you know, resulted in a lot of loss of traditional ways of life. And that was specific and intentional. In more uh, recent times, we've had isolation still with reservations, right? A lot of our reservations or rancherias or tribal lands are located in isolated areas. We may not have access to grocery stores, schools may be far away. Um, big towns, uh, job opportunities. So there are a lot of ways that reservations or tribal lands are still isolating to a lot of community members. For schools and communities, many of us are just now retransitioning to schools in person. You know, we are social creatures and that's been hard for us these last couple of years with the pandemic being away, trying to interact. Um, our communities, we may be removed from communities. If we are away at school, our schools may be located without our, uh, outside of our traditional communities um, or the communities that we've had to kind of readjust to this pandemic, right? We may not have been able to be around our communities because of COVID, because of the pandemic. And that's been um, pretty difficult for us. 
with the pandemic, we know that um, Native people are three and a half times more likely to have contracted COVID and 1.8 times more likely to have passed away because of COVID-related complications, which is pretty devastating for our community, especially because, you know, we are losing a lot of elders, we're losing a lot of family members, and I don't think that anybody is kind of untouched by this statistic. In addition to that, we've got other hurts. We've got residential school trauma that's been resurfacing. We've seen a lot of um, coverage on it lately, a lot of um, remains going home. We've seen a, a kind of a rediscovery by mainstream media of what's been happening, things that we as a community are aware of, um, but it's kind of coming to light for everybody else. And so that is bringing up a lot of a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of revisiting that with our elders and people who directly experience that. Um, media portrayals are not always the most positive. We just had the Super Bowl here um, in the U.S., and you know it was the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Um, and so, what does that mean for our identity and how we see ourselves, or how other people see us? Um, some of that is changing. We are you know, as Native people are kind of taking the lead on some of our own narratives and putting those out there um, into mainstream media. And you'll see a couple of gifts that I use from those uh, self-portrayals to hopefully combat some of those, um, those misrepresentations. In addition, a lot of us are affected by the climate crises going on. I hope everybody is safe. There's been some really extreme weather in the last couple of weeks, both across you know, the world and here in the United States. And so those climate crises are definitely affecting us, especially as we are isolated or um, have limited access to different resources because of where we're situated. Additionally, there are fights um, currently going on for our rights to bodily autonomy, to make decisions for ourselves um, throughout the United States. And I know that is weighing heavy on a lot of young people and young women and, and indigenous girls. And lastly, the general state of um, poverty and living in a, this capitalist society that is uh, very difficult and very hard for a lot of our folks. As individuals, there's often a pressure to achieve as first-generation college students. So when our students and our young uh, women and girls do go to college, there tend to be few women of color mentors and supports for them. They may feel that they have a pressure to do well for themselves um, and others, and that if they fail, that they're confirming negative stereotypes about Native uh, people. And so that pressure can really be internalized and can be really difficult to manage. Uh, along with just the stressors of attending school. There's the concept of tokenization as well. For some of us, we may be the only Native people in our sphere, whether it's work, whether it's sports, whether it's um, school. And so when topics about Native issues come up, other folks may look to us as the answer, well, what is your opinion? Can you speak for the entire Native community? Um, and so this is a big pressure, right? Because we may not carry that responsibility to be able to do that, to be able to speak on everything. And so there is that sometimes pressure of being the token Native person to speak to that. We know that interpersonal violence affects Native uh, girls and women at a disproportionate rate. Um, and domestic violence and sexual violence against Native uh, women has increased since the pandemic. And so this is really serious. It's really scary for a lot of us. We've had a lot of um, attention to missing and murdered Indigenous women and relatives. Um, but the fact remains that this still is a very big threat to our, our person. And so taking care of ourselves, whether it's literally surviving that or just understanding and, and living with the understanding that there is a threat out there to our, to our bodies and to our persons is very heavy. And lastly, 
Some of us are engaged in substance misuse and substance misuse as a coping mechanism, right? And as a way to combat um, combat any of the traumas and things that we are, are handling and engaging with. And so that's oftentimes we see young, young people using uh, substances and misusing substances as a way to handle um, and cope with all of these stressors. Are there any other things that folks can think of um, that are weighing on them that they would like to add? Okay, we'll keep going. I would like to offer this time to take um, some time to reflect and journal. So I'm gonna mute myself, but please feel free. This is very heavy. And so, um, you know, we wanna talk about how, you know, journal about how it resonates with you. And then those that wanna share can share in the chat box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mute and then I'll come back in a couple of minutes after we've had a chance to journal. If folks need more time, they can still take more time. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen this. So uh, Reservation Dogs on um, FX or Hulu. Um, this is one of my favorite characters, Cheese. Um, and you know, it, the one word that I uh, came up with when I was journaling is that this feels uh, very heavy, um, heavy for me to, to talk about and to dive into and to put out there in such a short amount of time. I'm uh, curious if anybody else has anything that they would like to share about how this felt for them. The chat box is available. There are um, emojis in there, which I didn't know. Um, we can send words.
Okay, we'll move forward. I do want to take this moment to pause and redirect. One of the things that I think is really great about our communities is, oh, it is, a, it is very big. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think it's impossible to talk about where we are, where we are without talking about how everything has been in the past um, and how it has influenced us today. I really appreciate that comment. Thank you. Thank you for that, realizing that you may not have the, the greatest coping mechanisms. I'm hoping that through this workshop, we can kind of um, build some of those supports and you can identify some other strategies to help you with that. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. I think it is important for us to be vulnerable, to be open. Um, for me, I, I believe that's, you know, when we need each other the most is when we're, um, when we're needing that support. And so being able to reach out rather than close off, I think has been a benefit, um, a benefit for, for me. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Um, one of the things that I think that we as a community do well with, right, I think a lot of us know that this history exists. A lot of us know that there's pain, there are difficult um, topics uh, and experiences that we've gone through, and yet we're here, uh, we're able to find joy, we're able to find happiness. I don't know about you all, but, um, you know, one of the things that one of my, my partners said to me when he first met my family was that, you know, we laugh really loud. Like it's this really big, really big cacophony of laughter when we get together. And I think that being able to laugh and smile alongside our pain has been a really valuable asset and tool. And so in this pause and redirect, I would like to invite you to do something that may feel a little bit um, awkward at first, um, but what we're going to do is, is I'm going to put a, a finger up and we're going to say ha every time. So it'll go ha, 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 ha. And so I'm going to try to keep track of my fingers because this is a little bit tricky for me, but this is kind of a way to kind of shake out that heaviness and bring in some of that laughter and light. So if you'll please indulge me, um, I know you won't be able to laugh with me on, um, on camera, but I would appreciate it if I knew that you were doing it with me. So, ha, 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 
may not know what a mental health illness or what a mental illness is and where to even look for those resources. There are financial barriers um, to accessing mental health services. Uh, some of us may not have health insurance. Our health insurance may not cover mental health uh, services. Um, in addition to that, there may be limited local resources. There may be nothing to us close by that we can access. Um, it may be difficult for us to get to those to the to therapy, to get to behavioral help supports, to get to talking circles. Um, and so that is also a barrier for us accessing those mental health services. And there may be a general distrust, right? There may be a lack of um, culturally competent providers. You know, we may not see anybody who looks like us. We may not have a, a provider who resonates um, with us or understands kind of where we're coming from. Maybe we're saying something and the way that they're interpreting our worldview is completely, um, you know, we're going one way and they're going another way, you know, and so having culturally competent providers um, can create a better sense of trust. Sometimes there are confidentiality concerns, right? We don't want families knowing our business, but maybe we don't want the community knowing our business. And we're worried that if we're accessing these services, maybe in a Indian health clinic, that that's going to get out to everybody or, or they're going to see us coming to the therapy and they're going to know, hey, something's going on with so-and-so. And did you see so-and-so, right? Um, there's a concern that there may be a lack of proper diagnosis because of that lack of um, culturally competent uh, care and lens. Um, does anybody else have any um, other barriers that you can see accessing mental health services? You know, we, we want to see people um, and feel supported and welcomed when we go to a place. Sometimes that is a, a barrier in and of itself, right? Going into a space that you've built the courage to go into and you feel turned off by the way that they're interacting. And so one of the things we want to see, right? We want an auntie at the reception of the doctor's office to help us feel safer. Um, we want to be able to access these things, and sometimes they're not all readily available. But please do know those supports are out there, and that's what we're hoping to, to get to. So we're all juggling different responsibilities and commitments, right? We've got a lot of things on our plate. There's a lot of things going on. Really quickly, if you could think about top five, what are your top five responsibilities and commitments? If you wanna write them down, if you wanna think about them and put them in the chat box, you can do that. I'll do that too. Yes, work, school, fitness, family, mental health, for sure. If you have a dog who has to get walked, I've got work, I gotta take care of home. My grandma lives with us, right? Yes, school, job, family, friends, physical health, work, kids, money, your partner, mental health. Well, I really appreciate um, that mental health is on there for some of you. Um, I think sometimes it can get it can get pushed to the side, right? When we're juggling all of these things, you know. And of course, there are more things than that, right? There are lots of things that can feel like we're adding, you know, something new is being put on your plate every day, you know. And so, 
I really would like to encourage us to see how is our mental health being accounted for? Is it the last thing on the list? Um, can we fit it in where, you know, it's part and parcel of the other things? Does mental health kind of go along with physical health, maybe engaging with family or friends um, in a positive way helps us with our mental health? Excuse me. All of this to say, you know, as a people, we have never survived by ourselves, right? We have never just one a one person camp, you know. We've always survived by taking care of each other, by looking out for each other, and by sharing the load. And so I really like this quote by Bell Hooks um, because I feel like that summarizes that, right? Rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. And the healing is an act of communion. It is only through taking care of one another, through taking care of ourselves that we can heal. And I think oftentimes a lot of us, um, you know, young girls and women are, are taught to care for others and really recognizing that it's important for us to care for ourselves so that we can, you know, be a part of this community and that other people are willing to help us take care of ourselves, right? To be willing to accept that help for ourselves as well. So weaving communities of care, right? So traditionally, we did not have to carry everything ourselves. We've had tools, we've had supports. Some of us have um, burden baskets. That's what we have up in my way. So I wanted us to envision our supports as, you know, these resources being woven together, right? Self, community, and also outside resources. So here we're gonna kind of journal. So if you have a pen and paper, um, Please get that ready. So looking at ourselves, if you want to draw like a little bubble in there, if you want to do I am, something like this, right? So I want you to think about things that you are, right? What are your positive characteristics, your positive traits? and go ahead and branch out from that I am and write them down. This may feel a little foreign um, to some of us, uh, at least for me growing up, you know, I wasn't raised to kind of brag about myself. And so this may feel a little bit difficult to do. Um, but I, I really want to challenge you to think about what are some positive characteristics or wonderful traits that you have. And if you're having a hard time doing that, you know, think about if you were to post a picture on Facebook, right, and you've got some really supportive aunties or friends and they're saying, oh my gosh, my beautiful girl, my beautiful niece, like, I love you. What would these people say about you? Because sometimes people are better reflectors of that um, for us. And when you're ready, if you want to share, if you want to share in the chat box um, some things that, some characteristics that you've identified, and I'll put some in there too.
I love that big smile. I love that. Strong, yes. Smart thinker. Listener, that's great. Fast learner. I'm jealous. <laughs> I love that, that's great. Empathetic, I resonate with that. I put, I put playful in there for me. I think it's been really important for me to um, be playful and, and be fun and be hopeful that things can be better. I think it's been a, a really important uh, characteristic I've tried to take on recently. And, and what are some of the things that you do to take care of yourself, right? I know some people did put mental health on some of those five things they're juggling or physical health. So what are some things that we do to take care of ourselves? If folks want to share that in the chat box, then maybe we can give some others some ideas. That'd be great to share. Movement, nice. What kind of movement? Any kinds? Are we walking? Are we running? Are you dancing? Soaking up the sun. Amazing. It works even when the clouds are out. The sun still gets to you. Please, I encourage you to, to get outside if you can, if it's not, it's not too rainy or too snowy where you're at. Therapy, exercise, play listening to your children. <laughs> Not all the time where they'll get, they'll really pull one over on you. Huh? <laughs> Making time for the gym, reconnecting with friends. It's really important. I think, you know, COVID has gotten us a lot, a lot of us isolated. Um, we've got some tools and strategies to be able to, to reconnect, right? Via social media, we've got access now more than ever to be able to share things with, you know, with one another. But sometimes reconnecting in person um, really makes a world of difference for rejuvenating. Dancing, oh, I love that. Wonderful, another dancing, yoga, walking, yes. I, I appreciate that. Um, I have a little one and sometimes I'll tell her like, I'll start dancing and she'll look at me kind of silly. And I'll say, oh, that's just my wiggle worm. My wiggle worm wants to dance, <laughs> you know? So sometimes we've got to just let our bodies move um, to get those endorphins going right. Yeah. When we think about, you know, taking care of ourselves, right? Sometimes we get stuck in this self. 
but it is just us, right? That these are things that we can do to take care of ourselves. And this is where it, it ends. Um, and so when we're thinking about how we can support ourselves and our mental health, I want to challenge us to think a little bit bigger, right? To think about who our communities are. Um, outside of your bubble of who you are, right? If you could think about um, who you can turn to, right? If you're having issues that feel too big to carry on your own, if you wanna go ahead and write those folks um, or those, those places or those um, communities down. And here are some prompts that you can use to kind of guide you in thinking about um, who that might be. So blank makes me feel safe. Blank makes me feel loved. Blank makes me feel cherished. Blank is rooting for me. Wonderful, as we're, we're journaling and reflecting on that, if folks want to share that in the chat, um, that would be great. And you can share as you go, once you think about them too.
I feel really um, honored that you all are taking the time to do this and to name um, to name these people in safe places. We're taking it so seriously. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, if folks want to type in the chat as they reflect, um, that's fine. We may have time at the end to kind of follow back up and circle in, but if anybody would like to share, you're welcome to. I don't know if I can see. Are folks comfortable moving, keep going, or do they need more time to reflect? I think maybe I'll keep going unless I hear um, or see something that we need more time. I also want us to revisit our I am, right? I know I prompted that in the beginning. Um, how are these people that you, you identified or these communities, would they describe you? I love that turning to family and friends and community when things feel challenging, certainly. My community describes me as resilient and strong. Most definitely, they must be onto something. We also have a lot of um, tools, you know, I mentioned earlier, even though we've been isolated with the pandemic, with this kind of state of the world, um, we've got tools now more than ever, we can be more connected, right? We can send emails, we can be here on Zoom, right? And you all are in different communities, um, in different parts of, of the country. And so we're able to do that. And, and, you know, I really want to encourage us to look at these tools to build communities where they might not have been, right? Build virtual communities. Beyond just ourselves, beyond our communities and those resources um, and those uh, folks that take care of us and make us feel held and seen, there are other resources out there and available to support you and your mental health. 
One of those resources is Strong Hearts Native Helpline. So here's the, uh, the phone number. There's a phone number, and there are safe and confidential um, anonymous domestic dating and sexual violence helpline uh, for Native folks or Alaska Natives. Um, there's also a chat now feature, so it'll connect you one on one with a live advocate. Really important, as I mentioned, that you know the increase in interpersonal violence uh, for our Native, excuse me, for our Native. Um, girls and women and families in general with the pandemic has increased. I believe, oh yes, I believe the, the link to that website has been pasted um, in the chat box. There's also We Are Native. So there's an ask your relative feature on this website and you can kind of submit a question to them and they'll answer it as a staff. Um, it's kind of like an ask your relative, ask your auntie a question. So if you've got a question, you know, on your mind and you feel like, I don't know who to ask, this is the question that you can ask them and they'll respond to you on. Um, additionally, they have lots of resources. Some of them are on culture and native pride. They've got resources around your body, bodily autonomy. They have resources on relationships, dating, sexual health information, as well as mental health resources. And then, you know, for some of us, we may feel like, okay, what now? Uh, I've got all this. I know all of this information. Um, there's these things going on in my community. What can I do? They have a section on making an impact and how you can get involved. Um, in your community or to create space to make change and advocate for change. And of course, there's the C Fund who's hosting um, this, um, this webinar. So the STE Fund, you know, if you're feeling stressed or depressed or anxious, you can always text Steve. 741741 and it'll connect you with a trained crisis counselor 24 7 which is you know so incredibly valuable you can also information you can also excuse me email um any questions or requests for information to info at stefan.org and the Stefan also has a social media page. There's a lot of folks are on social media. You can follow them at the Steve Fund. Are there any other additional resources that folks know of? Uh, if they want to share, um, now is the time you can do that in the chat box. Um, those are just the big ones that we collected since we didn't know where folks were um, located at. And so these ones that we made available um, are available to across uh, the United States. The chat box is there. Folks are, are welcome to share when, if they can think of anything. I would like to thank everybody for um, being here, for sharing, you know, parts of their personal lives. This is a difficult topic. Mental health is tricky to talk about for a lot of us, um, but so very important because you know, at the base of us being well, our minds have to be well, our spirits have to be well. And so in exchange for that, I would like to um, to offer you a song. I've asked my grandmother um, for permission. And in our, in, in, you know, my community, we have a song specifically for young girls and young women. And so that's what I would like to share with you today. Um, at the end of, of our songs, we say, oh, as a kind of um, recognition and, and appreciation for that song. So um, if we could play that, please. And sing sing a girl song, Jill. For the girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 You're on your mouth, yeah. Oh. 
This is for the young girls. <laughs> I hope that that you know that made you feel something. I don't know if it made you want to dance. It makes me want to dance every time I hear it, even though I'm not <laughs> not a young girl anymore. Um, but I, I do really appreciate um, you all being here and participating and, and and listening to that. Thank you. I would like to let you know that there is a next webinar. Call for Girls Rising, um, ASHA, ASHA, uh, South Asian Young Women Giving Voice to Our Mental Health and Wellbeing. And the presenter is Dr. Shikal Shah. She's amazing. Uh, it'll be taking place on March 15th um, next week uh, from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. There's a QR code if you want to scan it, but I believe, yep, the webinar link is in the chat as well. And before you go, if you could please complete the survey, uh, there's a, the bit.ly um, survey link will be in the chat as well as the QR code. And please stay connected. The C fund is available um, as a resource here for you at the C fund or the C fund.org. And once you've done that, um, we, we're open up, you know, if there's any questions that you have that I can answer, please feel free to share that in the chat.
Thank you all so much for joining us.